Now that we have a better understanding of evolution and genetics, it's finally time to start to talk about race. But let's first talk about subspecies and how they might be used to help us understand how human variation is patterned. First, let's remind ourselves that the study of human biological diversity is challenging and has been historically fraught with controversy. This is my favorite opening sentence to any textbook ever, um, but it is true. So let's remind ourselves some previous attempts to classify humans. Linnaeus had six, Blumenbach had five, Cuvier had three, Morton had four. In the 20th century, there was like 20 or more. Um, K means analysis are Six. Remember, that's not a very good tool for this. Um, and currently, the US Census has six, six uh, different categories. But really, if we look back farther in history, all groups really break down into us versus them. And there has not been a historical consensus on what these racial groups would be if they exist. Just to remind ourselves, here are the ones that Linnaeus came up with. But remember, Homo sapiens ferus and Homo sapiens monstrosus, these are both uh, not good candidates for species at all. But at least with Linnaeus, he designated them officially as subspecies. So let's talk a little bit about subspecies, what they are, and if they apply to races and humans at all. So we do use the term subspecies for other species. And this just means populations with small regular differences. So these different populations are on their way to becoming species. Because remember with Darwin, it's these subpopulations where it's really going on. It's the variation within a species where evolution is happening and that's what's most interesting. So let's take tigers as an example. So here we have a couple different subspecies, Bengal, Siberian, Sumatran, Malayan, Indochinese, and South China tiger. They're all obviously tigers. But if you look closely, let's look at their faces first. They have slight different variations. The Sumatran tiger, wow, has this gorgeous beard here. Um, and some of them are slightly different shades of orange. If you look at the Indochinese tiger, it is much less fluffy. If you look at their body, there's also different amounts of white and orange and where exactly that color is placed. So while they're all very, very similar, you can notice these differences. And here we can take a closer look at their faces and see there's slightly different proportions going on, different amounts of fluffiness, and slightly different amounts of where those colors are placed. I also wanted to bring your attention to this graph. You might notice that there are three tigers that are grayed out. These are extinct subspecies of tiger, and yep, it's our fault. Um, it is important to preserve what biodiversity we have left because we are actually in the sixth major mass extinction in the history of life on Earth, and uh, this one's our fault. Uh, but that's, that's for another day. Let's look at these tigers in another way. So now, rather than simply comparing their differences or similarities, we can put them in a phylogenetic tree and look at who is more closely related to whom. So here, we just have their morphology. It's also helpful to look at their genetics. And especially, we want to have multiple individuals from each subspecies and make sure they're all clustering together in monophyletic groups. And this is exactly what we see here. You'll notice that we don't have multiple individuals for all subspecies here, but you'll see that all um, tigris groups together, all Sumatra groups together, all Jackson Eye and all Corbetti all group together. Um, so if we expect subspecies to be real, this is what we expect to see. We would expect to see distinct groups, uh, all individuals of one subspecies are more closely related to each other than another group. Let's look at some of the variation we see in humans just to get warmed up. There's a lot of variation here. Can you figure out where these people are from? This lady is from Ethiopia. He is actually from Sweden. He is uh, a Sami or a Laplander, um, the only indigenous uh, or hunter-gatherer group left in Europe. Uh, this man with his glorious beard, he's an Ainu from the northern island of Japan, Hokkaido. She is from Papua New Guinea. 
His family here is from Paraguay. Um, they are Khoisan from South Africa, and these ladies are from the Andaman Islands. So remember, there's a lot of different places on Earth, and it's more than just the uh, stereotypes that you run across. So, what is the subspecies? Do you think we can apply this concept to humans? <music>